So, hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. How are we all doing? Rocking and rolling in a free world. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 21st, 24th of uh, Feb 2019. No trade calls, no recommendations, a response for the own stuff. We're here for educational purpose only. So what's happening, guys? I think it's going to be a short one because there's not that much to add. I mean, what's changing in the context, really, so in terms of the outlook, then this week we'll try and do, I'm going to do specific uh, in-depth look into Aussie and Kiwi because we've got some some open positions there. But basically, uh, Kiwi data in the overnight session. Tonight, we've got Monday, we've got Carney speaking, then we're going to have the inflation report. Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got Powell testifying. On Thursday, we've got US GDP. On Friday, we've got Canadian GDP. And we also have Powell speaking again. Now, keep in mind also that Friday is the 1st of March. So theoretically, that's the, you know, that's the deadline for the new uh, tariffs. So we'll have to see if they're postponed or not. And also, I'm not sure because it's been changing, but it looks like we may have the results of the Mueller investigation out this week. So again, there's there's a lot of uh, knowns unknowns that could uh, that could hit the wires. So, I mean, really not a lot has changed. Uh, the markets continue to ramp up, right? And the big question I think on everybody's mind is, is this uh, tariff uh, tariff deal, China, whatever, um, um, trade discussions, is this going to be a massive buy the news, uh, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news? We don't know because as far as, uh, as things are looking, this could be ex easily be extended for another month or so. So God knows how long they're going to extend this for. I have no idea. Uh, it could be done this week. I would not be surprised if they extended for another three months, right? Um, bottom line is, despite the fact that we have had quite an impressive ramp here on equities and on the yes, what's what's changed? Well, not a lot has changed from when we actually sold off, right? In December, actually, the only difference is that uh, economic data is not getting any better and the forecasts uh you know future uh forecasts aren't getting any better so it looks like everything is deteriorating objectively speaking and the only thing we've had is we've had this corrective ramp in indeed something which was sold very very hard in uh, you know also lower liquidity but on the hope of a trade deal but again ask yourself even if we get some kind of a trade trade deal which isn't a fudge even though it looks like it's going to be a fudge is that going to change the uh, you know the underlying economic situation the data probably not so it's going to be interesting but clearly when you get these ramps and this kind of low liquidity chop it's very very easy for the market to get pushed around in whatever way direction you know in the same way it got pushed lower in december and the same way it's being ramped here so it's a little bit of a wait and see now as es hovers around this 28 100 very pivotal there's no reason why they can't ramp this all the way back up into 29s but in in the same way any kind of minor selling comes in there's no reason why this isn't going to be back in 27 or 26 is very quickly too so it's a tricky one to keep uh you know it's a tricky one i think what's far more interesting is in the context of this ramp, as we've been saying, is the discussion on the economic data. And the other discussion is, as we've been talking, you know, essentially FANG Tech has been ripping this higher, right? And, you know, the two big names we always talk about in general, you know, if you look at tech and if you look at the, um, the Dow, you know, complete cocaine angel is uh, Amazon and Boeing, right? And if you look at FANG, uh, you know, Amazon's the same thing, Apple's the same thing, it hasn't really been going anywhere right? It's just not going anywhere. This is a tell we've been discussing and we've been, discuss we've been looking at for a long time. And that means that essentially, even though we're getting some ramps on the NASDAQ, essentially the NASDAQ is still stuck, right? The 7,000 being that pivotal level. And you see how it's just been hovering here, only managing to close above on that holiday on Monday. And then on Friday, they just ramped it up for the close here. So can this gap up and continue to squeeze? Sure. But do we, unless there's some, some news, do we expect this to have a lot of legs? Probably not, right? Probably not. I mean, if you're looking at, as we uh, discussed Boeing, that's just completely, uh, 
going crazy here. I mean, if you look at this uh, on the monthly, this is something which is, uh, you know, you, you can't short this kind of action yet. Uh, this could easily continue to be irrational a lot longer than anybody could be solvent. But one thing's for sure, this is going to end in tears one way or the other, right? And the other chart, which is particularly interesting, which has been leading, you know, led to the downside, and we always keep an eye out for it to give us a feel for a tell, is the Russell, which has finally managed to make it back all the way into that 200. We had that selling that closed it below on Thursday, and then Friday we got, again, magical free money Friday, hovering, trying to trade around this 1600. Keep in mind, you know, those levels that are the 1600 on the Russell, the 7K on the NQ, the 2500 on the ES, and a 25,000 on the, on the YM. So those are really, you know, we're still stuck. You know, you could spin it any way you want, but essentially we're still stuck. If you're looking at the bonds, what are the bonds doing? Well, again, also here, no big change for us. Uh, we've seen a lot of wheeling and dealing, but our base case here is still that we've broken out of the chop zone and we're slowly trying to build a little bit of a base to, to take a little bit of a press higher towards this higher area and the, and the 200 on the weekly. If you look at um, gold, we came back into these highs. This is our seasonal play. Keep in mind, we're going into seasonally a weaker period in gold too now. So our play from the end of last year into 1350 is done. And there was a nice little short here with that daily reversal. We talked about this before it actually happened. And again, it's it, it's a, it's it's what you would expect, right? If you go back and even go, go back on a monthly, this is an area which is essentially capped, right? All the way back to, you know, 2014, 2013 area. So normally speaking, unless it's on a catalyst, unless it's on a strong piece of news on something real, it would not be, you know, it, it would not be reasonable to expect this to go from the from these lows knife through butter and break through that unless there's some kind of catalyst. Right. So we ultimately think it will break higher. But, you know, it comes back in closes. You've got this is a good place to take some profits and try and take some tactical shorts. Now, how is this going to play out? Well, likely it'll stay bid as long as it can hold above the 1300 this would be a nice little retracement to try and play for that ultimate move back through the 1350s into the 1400s if the 1300 gives then you probably see a lot a quickish move to clip these stops and a move all the way back into the 200 back into the 1250s right and what does that mean in terms of uh, dxy action on the dxy no big change for us we've been uh, talking about the asymmetry of shorting this area for the move back down. And so far it's trying to play out. But again, uh, not a lot has been going on, right? Look at it this way. Not a lot has been going on. And it's not surprising because we're just waiting. We're still waiting for, for some kind of a resolution of the trade talks. We're still tr trying to see what's going on. You know, we're getting a lot of uh, wheeling and dealing, backtracking, uh, U-turns from the Fed. Uh, nothing's happening on, on, on the trade talk. So it's normal that we haven't really broken anywhere. Our base case is still that. And what we've seen also from the the currency talks and, and the trade talks, what they, they announced on Friday, is that essentially uh, what we've been talking about for a long time is that the strong dollar will, you know, break the world. And, uh, you know, the U.S. doesn't want the strong dollar, you know, whatever way they spin it, you know, they're not going to want a strong dollar. So we still think that even though uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to crumble, right, our base case is still that we're going to stay inside a broader choppy zone and that right now this is what we're still looking for and this is what we're still playing for, right? And, that, and you see all this choppy action here you know it's translated into the um it's translated into the euro right we're stuck here at these lows and we're not really going anywhere i mean if you go back on the weekly it's probably a nicer way of looking at it you see that we've had this sideways chop here we've broken out and now this top range this previous resistance here is acting as support so 
if this breaks the 1300, is it going to be the death of the euro? Um, well, you're already seeing people calling it the death of the euro. That's favorite um, Twitter and, and, and FinTwit talk, death of euro. But essentially, clearly, if we trade and close below the 1300, our base case will just be, okay, well, we've gone back into this choppy range. And unless something substantial changes, we'll likely stay into this range, right? Very little reason to expect this to trade sub this range unless something really substantial comes. But the way things are trading, uh, at least the way we're looking at it, it would make a lot more sense for us to this for this to base, even if it's going to base in a sloppy manner and try and come back to a little bit more neutral ish of this area around these 1550s. Right. So again, as as I've said, there's not a lot going on, right? You're seeing some two two sided action on the currencies, but essentially there's not an awful lot going on. And you know, we'll have to see. I think this week could be pivotal, especially if we get some kind of resolution or more um, more out of the trade talks. Maybe we get something out of Mueller. We'll have to see. In terms of crude, um, another one which has been a little bit of a tricky call well not really that tricky but we actually thought that on this break here this would would actually accelerate and come back into the 50 but uh clearly the bids have been supporting this well ahead of that move lower and they've just taken it right ramped it right back up here this is an interesting zone to watch and if you've been seeing you know we've been talking a lot those ramps especially the 11 a.m ramps and you know, a lot of people have been talking about that on twitter too you see that crude's really being a prime candidate for this and you know it did what it likes to do on friday it, it ramped early but then it it, it let go right it, it wasn't pretty the close wasn't necessarily pretty on friday right we're just essentially look at all these negative candles so we still think that friday is just you know wheeling and dealing we don't pay too we wouldn't pay too much attention but where we go into this week is where we left off last week right like nasdaq around that 7000 that 200 dma uh yes around that 2800 and essentially you can't sweat the small moves right you have to wait to see some kind of follow through because the market's really easy to push around here but if we get a decent break here then we would not be surprised to see that 60 print very quickly but equally we get a, another negative close these lows get taken out that 55 could come very very quickly if you lose the 55 then that's going to be the pivotal level but again i wish i could uh spin this uh another way or making make it more interesting than it is unfortunately we don't get to choose the hand we're dealt we just get to choose how we play it or if we play it at all right and that's where we are so again uh wishing everybody an awesome week i'll try and do we'll do a little bit more of deep dive in some of the currencies this week and let's see what happens have an awesome one takes care guys bye bye